When I needed an airplane to put her on my DLE 40 twin, I remembered how well my Aeroworks 60cc Freestyle Extra 260 flew and went right back to Aeroworks. And I would find out that the 30cc version is every bit as good. Aeroworks planes come with most of the pieces wrapped in bubble wrap inside a double cardboard box. And they give you lots of nice things from the CG Buddy to engine templates and a very good hardware set. These planes go through a bunch of temperature changes between the factory and your house, so you do have to shrink out some wrinkles here and there, but it's not bad at all. The instructions say to go over all of the joints with thin CA. That's a very easy thing to do and a good idea. The only hinging you have to do on this model is the rudder, and that just gets epoxied in, and I tape it to make sure it doesn't slide out before the epoxy sets up. The hinge gaps are pretty small, but Airworks gives you some clear covering to put in the hinge lines to seal them up. I cheat and use hinge tape. No matter what motor you have, make sure you check the templates they include with this kit, because a lot of motor mounts are the same layout. I found that one of them matched my DLE 40 perfectly. Line up the hash marks on the template with those on the firewall and the motor's perfectly placed. You do have to come up with a drill bit the right size for your mounting bolts, but after that it's real easy to do. The distance from the firewall to the base of the prop washer is very important, and on this one I had to add quarter inch blocks behind the motor to get it right. I cut the blocks from hardwood and installed the motor just a bit more than the finger tight, then soaked the blocks with CAA. The next day I went ahead and torqued the bolts down, and it's stayed right there ever since. Something to watch out for is some servos are deep enough that the elevator servos will touch inside the fuselage. I found that was happening with mine and I just doubled up the rubber bushings and that cured the problem. Throttle linkages always seem to take a little bit of engineering. With this one I found that if I bent the end a little bit, the rod itself would miss the floor of the motor box. The mid-wing side force generators fit in the slots in the wing. You have to cut the covering out around those slots to get them in. Use the heat iron to seal the covering around the slot and then cut the covering away. I had to trim the bottom of a couple of these side force generators to get them to fit right, but it just took a couple of minutes. Airworks gives you a set of decals with the plane, but I'm a big fan of B&E graphics and they make a nice package for this plane, so I got those. B&E also offers this pen for sealing up the edges on covering and graphics. This is a simple step that can go a long way to protecting your covering from gasoline and oil. I use cardstock like this to find out where the holes need to be cut in a cowl. I secure these to the fuselage well behind where the cowl attaches. Then we can install the cowl, lay these over, and trace on the cowl where the cutouts have to be. One of the last things we do on any airplane is check the CG, and this is where the CG buddy that Airworks supplies you comes in really handy. The CG Buddy plates fit between the wing and a fuselage on the spar tube. Then we put the loops on the end of the cord over these washers, and then you just slowly lift the plane up with one hand. Checking the CG on a big airplane can be hard, but the CG Buddy makes it a simple one-handed deal. Now the rest of the model airplane world needs to catch up. And here we are at the field ready to put this thing in the air. Here you can see that using those cardboard templates makes cutting out the cowl a lot easier because I am terrible at this. And here's another reason I love B&E graphics. They always have something trick to put on the cowl. I'll clean up this wiring once I'm sure that the CG is where I want it when I fly the plane. And here's the 16 ounce Fortitude gas tanks. This is actually flight number two on this plane because I snuck out the night before without the cameraman. But it only needed a couple of clicks of trim on the first flights, so I'll just make believe this is the Maiden, because it looks exactly the same. And you can see that that little 40 twin pulls this plane around just fine. For all of the flights in this video, I'm using a Vest 20B prop. But for now, the plane really seems to like this prop, so we're going to leave it alone for a while. I always do some approaches or touch and goes just to check and see if the plane has any bad habits on landing, and the extra does not have any bad habits. Aside from being so stable, it makes me brave anyway. And here's something I never do in the first couple of flights with a new airplane, but the extra feels so stable and easy to fly, I thought I'd give it a try. A little higher, but give it a try nonetheless. And it's not bad at all. You can see how windy it is, the plane's getting blown backwards. 
And that led to me trying to tumble this thing a little bit and seeing how it recovers. And it recovers very well. Most of the time it's just a touch of opposite rudder or just letting the sticks go and it comes right out of it. And right about here is where I found out that I forgot to increase the idle trim a little bit. And when I chopped the throttle back, it quit. This is like flight number four, and I do not like trying dead sticks this early with a plane. Plus, it's real windy, and I don't know how this thing glides very much. But we're going to find out that it's not bad at all. I actually turned it in too soon. It could have glided a lot farther. But we can get it down on the field, and all's well. And here's where I proved to myself that this Twin 40's got enough power to pull it out when I screw up a hover, which is pretty often. And the extra doesn't need a whole lot of airspeed to start responding to the controls cleanly. Even straight up and quite a bit of wind. When it starts going away, I can just gas it and give it some control and just fly it away. Even with the pretty gusty wind, I think the elevators are not bad at all for my first attempts with this plane. I don't know if this is actually called anything, but I love just shooting this plane up in the air and crossing the sticks all up and letting it tumble around. It seems to like it too. I kept telling myself not to keep trying to hover this thing in so much wind. But then it started looking pretty cool to me how this thing was blowing back across the sky. Plus this all counts as experience so I'll get better at some point. And I know that I can just bail out of this whenever I want to. This is a little later on day two and the winds calmed down a little bit so I thought I'd try hovering it a little lower and I'm getting a little bit better, but it's still a good thing that this thing will fly itself out of these things. One of the things that tells me that this is a plane that I like and that it's set upright is how it'll go from an inverted flat spin to an upright flat spin without losing anything. And it flies knife edge very easily. The biggest problem for me was not giving it too much rudder. I think with little practice, getting more used to this plane, knife edges will be very easy to fly. The plane sure likes doing them. Flying inverted with the 30cc extra is almost too easy. But most things are pretty easy with this plane. Except for me making it easy for the cameraman to follow. So if you're looking for a plane in this size, you need to check out the Aeroworks 30cc Freestyle Extra 260. This is a great plane, it's very easy to fly, and it's very aerobatic. You can set this plane up so docile, I wouldn't have any problem with teaching somebody how to fly on a plane like this with using a buddy box. You can dial this plane down to get them started, and then ramp it up as their skills increase, and they don't have to buy extra airplanes. But we all know that they're going to buy extra airplanes anyway, but we just won't tell them about that right now. <laughs> 